Hey there guys, how's it going? I've been receiving a lot of messages just recently asking me if I'd make a video covering the new tool, Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch. And aside from being one of the most snappily named tools on the market, it really is a performer. Let's get straight into it guys. So first of all, from an opened PixInsight window, I want you to click Resources, click Updates, and then Manage Repositories. From here, click Add and point this little URL box to the one that's located in the video description box just down below. It should be this one right here, ghsastro.co.uk forward slash updates. Hit OK on that until everything's closed back down and ready to go. Then hit resources once again, click updates once again, and this time press check for updates. Now the next time you close and reopen PixInsight, the tool should be installed and ready to go and you will find them, if everything went well, inside processes and intensity transformations. Right there, generalized hyperbolic stretch. So let's go ahead, get that thing opened up and ready to go. Now it's it's a pretty threatening window. I have to admit, the first time I opened this thing, I thought, ah, <laughs> where do I start? But um, a little bit of messing later, and I think it's a very good tool and I can certainly see it becoming a part of my uh, workflows going forwards and I hope so for you too because it gives you more control than ever really over uh, accurate targeting your stretching efforts in your images. So to that end I've prepared three separate images I want to work on as quickly as possible basically through this tutorial and uh, it's, it's these three sets here so first of all we've got one shot color dual narrowband data to work on we've got monochrome H alpha data to work on and finally, some RGB one-shot color broadband galaxy data to work on. And uh, let's just get going on them one at a time. So first of all, I'm going to click the window I actually want to work on. This is the uh, the broadband, sorry, dual narrowband one-shot color data. And I'm going to open a preview window from within generalized hyperbolic stretch. Once that's done, uh, the first task that I've been performing on this thing is to actually set the black point on the image. So to do that, I'm going to click the little icon there that says log. That's a logarithmic histogram view. I'm going to change the transformation type to a linear transformation. And then by selecting an area just behind the left hand edge of the, uh, the actual distribution of the histogram right there. So around about here is fine. Not into the data certainly not deep into the data and not miles away from the data but anywhere around about here if you can just see on my screen if i make that a little bit bigger hopefully this becomes a uh, more apparent what i'm talking about anywhere around about here is a good black point to set on your image and once that's done click send to bp hit apply reset the tool good to go on the next step it should have changed everything back to transformation type being generalized hyperbolic and close down your logarithmic view just click very generally anywhere on the on the image if you like or actually on the uh, the graph window right there using the zoom tools you can zoom in just a little bit uh, start to get this thing viewable so as i've done here you can see now the pixel values start to be represented on this histogram so we've got the red pixels the green pixels the blue pixels and the intersections of those where you know where the blue meets the green and we get these teals uh, where the red meets the yellow and we red meets the green rather and we get these yellows but also you'll see this big gray mass right here that's the, the the body of the venn diagram if you will the central point where everything converges um so i'm going to select for this first stretch smack in the middle of that gray area right there so this looks pretty good it doesn't have to be perfectly precise you know what i mean just anywhere near the middle we're not too worried about the verticality of this thing just the horizontal middle um so we're on generalized hyperbolic stretch we're gonna click send that to the symmetry point so it's going to take the value that we've just selected and apply it into this box right here sp you can also adjust the slider if you wish to fine tune this later but now i'm going to start to apply the stretch factor you can if you wish reset the histogram view right there get a, get a better overview of what's going on that up that stretch factor until the data is becoming visible bear in mind this is an iterative process don't kind of overcook it and try and do everything in one because you will inevitably do more harm than good unfortunately so uh just a little bit of a stretch a step in the right direction each time and now if i alter the local intensity if you just pay attention for a moment to this red line while I start to move this 
local intensity slider to the right, you can hopefully see the further right I go, the more vertical, effectively, the, um, the central point of that red line starts to get. So it's going to be putting its efforts in transforming the broadest part of that data right now. Now, the best way, I think, to, uh, to make these adjustments is by literally just sitting there and looking at the preview window while worrying less about exactly what numbers you're landing on with your mouse hand and instead just make it look like a reasonable step in the right direction. So that's to say not too far, not so small that you're going to have to make a million iterations, but you know, around about here. Nothing's overcooked. It looks all right. So I'm going to go ahead, apply that, reset the window once more, and now you can start to get a little bit more selective with this stretch if you would wish. So you can either select using the actual graph view right there, the parts of the image you'd like to work on, or using your left mouse button on the preview, selecting different regions. Hopefully you can see that yellow line moving around. It's going to work on different parts of it. So if you want to work on background regions, select a background region. And it'll put your uh, your symmetry point in the right area for you. If you want to work on midtones, select the midtones, that kind of thing. So I think I'm going to use probably around this, this edge right here. That's a good value, I think, to work on. Again, we can mess with this a lot, so don't worry too much about getting this perfect. Just start making baby steps in the right direction and it'll all start to make sense. So once I've selected that, I'm going to send that once again to the symmetry point, that new value that we've selected. I'm going to start to alter the stretch factor this time. Be a little bit more gentle on that stretch because it's very easy to, <laughs> as you can see, massively uh, Massively overcook this one, so just a little bit of a step in the right direction. An alteration there on the local intensity. A little boost. I think that's looking reasonable. Now I'm just going to make sure that I've got the right symmetry point for me selected, just by basically dragging it around a little bit. Moving it left. Nah, doesn't look as good. Move it too far right. Doesn't look as good. You know what I mean? It's, it's not... An exact science, you really are best off just focusing on that preview window. That's the thing that really matters. How does your image look rather than, you know, what the numbers say on the right hand side? So I'm going to say there looks pretty good to me. Looks about right. Go ahead, apply that. And that looks like a pretty well stretched image. I'd probably like to dial in the black point just a little bit more. So once again, if you wish, you can open up linear stretching mode. Select an area just off to the left hand side of that main histogram distribution. So, see, being careful to not select into any regions where you'll start to clip pixels, which making sure you're just behind where you need to be. Send that to the black point, as you can see, it looks pretty good. Again, don't be shy about sliding around the uh, the black point right here. Just keeping an eye on it. You know what I mean? You could probably set it yourself like this, so you can see that's way too bright. That's way too dark. It's it, it's not a uh, it's not rocket science. So around about there, looks a little bit overcooked. Mm, around about that looks good to me. So I'm going to settle at that, and I'd call that pretty well stretched image. It looks good to me. Now I'd be happy to move on with further steps of processing at that point. So I'm going to call that one done. That's one demonstration. Take a look now at this mono HA data. So I'll reset the tool, click the window I want to work on. Open a preview once again. I'm going to click that logarithmic view once again. And first of all, using the linear transformation type, select myself a black point. Hopefully you can see if I just make this window a bit bigger, exactly what I'm doing. So send that to the black point. It's not too far to the right. It's not too far to the left. Just set nicely. Not clipping any data is the most important part. So go ahead and close the logarithmic view if you like select again a broad part of the data or just anywhere on the image that's fine we should be back to generalized hyperbolic mode I'm going to send this to the uh, the symmetry point and zoom up just a little bit make sure that's accurately placed and we can see it isn't i'm actually off to the front i'd rather be selecting around the middle so you can see we're roughly equidistant from left to right through the broad part of this histogram uh, view right here. I'm going to send that instead to the symmetry point, start to stretch, 
reset the window if you want to keep an eye on things again I don't think it's that important but just get the data visible start to alter the local intensity sliding it over to the right being careful to not you know not go too far just make baby steps with this thing it's it's not too bad so that looks good to me which happens to just be a value of about 10.32 on local intensity your mileage will vary it'll, it'll be different image to image reset the view uh let's make another small transformation so i'm going to go for the broad part of the data i think once again send that to the symmetry point once again boost the stretch factor a little bit Boost the local intensity a little bit, being careful to not, you know, do this to your image where it's going to look <laughs> absolutely horrendous. Uh, that's looking reasonable, maybe a little bit stronger than I'm looking for. So that looks good. And now I reckon a final black point adjustment on this thing. Right about there. Just take a look at that. Slightly darker than I'm looking for. So drag that black point to the left. That looks good to me all right i'm happy with that and as you can see that's just taken me even while demonstrating it and trying to talk through it moments and i've got a nice stretch applied to this image okay so it's a pretty powerful tool now one final go this time on broadband rgb data it's invisible for you so select the image you want to work on open a preview and then using linear mode with a logarithmic view i'm going to set the black point so i'll open it up once again you can see the main spike of the histogram, the main body of it right there, just off to the left. A little bit of breathing room. Not over here, not in here. That looks good to me. Set that to the black point. Apply. Reset the whole tool. Okay. Next up, like I say, let's select either an area of the image with the left mouse button or place it in the body of it. Logarithmic view can be turned off now. By the way, um, once again, can't really see what we're doing so you could either click the zoom button and look at it that way or i'd rather just click it up a little bit or even type in a number manually that suits the uh, the width of your particular histogram distribution i'm going to go for the broad point like this it's a little bit too big to see on the screen whoops that looks pretty good that's roughly through the broadest point of all the data the gray point on this as you can see is much more centralized on broadband um calibrated data but all the same send that to the symmetry point start to bring up the stretch factor just a little bit i'll leave that deselected so you can keep an eye on what's going on and more importantly just keep looking at the uh the preview window there that's the really important thing in it how the image actually looks like i say so uh stretch factor sliding across to the right a little bit don't go crazy don't make too small moves Goldilocks zone. That's what we're looking for. A little bit of an alteration there in the stretch factor. Let's boost it up. It's looking pretty good. It seems like we've landed on, again, 6.4. So it's not like any of the other images, really. So apply that. Reset the tool. Select an area of the image I actually want to work on once again. So I'm going to this time draw a tighter preview so I can be more accurate with my selection. And I'd say perhaps I want to work on the fainter regions of these spiral arms in the galaxy. So maybe I'll select one manually, like down here or down here, here, here. You get the idea. Select the parts of the image you really want to work on yourself. Uh, it's just put it on the foot of this distribution right there. You could again, if you wish, go smack through the middle and see how that looks. Experiment. That's the beauty of it. No two data sets are going to be exactly the same. So I would never try and deal in hard and fast rules for this thing uh just experiment give it a go so send that now wherever you select to your symmetry point start applying a stretch you see the effect that we're having and again how easy it would be to go way too far with this thing uh, but a little bit of a stretch a little bit of a boost in the local intensity of this so you can see the effect once again it's having on that red line i just move this across the verticality of it is changing but just looking at the image itself, round about there looks to be what I'm aiming for. I would say if I just cycle the preview window back and forth, you can hopefully see it's a step in the right direction. Um, we could go ahead with that and let's say that's a nicely stretched image once again. If you want to, again, alter the 
black point, just use the linear tool, plonk it behind, and um, take a look. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the best thing. Just, just learn by doing. I would really say so. Again, I've got it slightly wrong. It's a little bit too aggressive. So maybe just slide that to the left a touch. You know what I mean? No harm done. Go ahead and apply it at that. And I think we've got three quite nicely stretched images there in a matter of minutes. All while doing a yeah, running commentary. So hopefully you can see. Don't be afraid of the tool. Get it downloaded and have a play. Uh, you've got nothing to lose. So guys, that's about it. I hope that that introduces this tool to you in some small way and uh, that you have a load of fun trying it out. That's the thing this is really all about, isn't it? Having some fun and, and enjoying life. So uh, yeah, with that said, guys, thank you all for your support. It means the world to me. And uh, doing this whole thing would be just about impossible without you guys. So thank you. Thank you all very much from the bottom of my heart. And I will see you in the next one so until then look after yourselves and those around you and uh, hopefully this guys <laughs>